Synchro Mystique presents the late conspiracy radio host May Brussel commenting on the televised assassination attempt on then President Ronald Reagan in 1981 said that she thought that the real time coverage and commentary had a chilling effect on critical inquiry. I was three or four years old at that time, but being old enough to remember later events, like the attacks of September the 11th, 2001, or the Boston bombing in 2013, I can say that there is often a difference between what I can actually see and what the talking heads say that I saw. This phenomenon seems to me to be at work in the present case, the strange death of George Floyd. Since the basic contours of the story are broadcast ad infinitum, I'll focus here not on the narrative as much as on the characters, as well as on the locations. The two main players in the story, of course, are Officer Derek Chauvin and George Floyd. Chauvin and Floyd became the center of attention and unrest after a video surfaced of Chauvin placing a knee on the back of the neck of Floyd during an arrest attempt, and Floyd was later reported to have died at a hospital. The reportage of the facts keeps changing. My presentation is based upon information that I have at my disposal presently. The details are subject to alteration by future discovery. This event is embedded within the larger pandemic having to do with the coronavirus. George Floyd is here pictured next to Corona beer. You can even see a mirror image in the reflective glass panel on the right of the screen. Several news outlets also reported that he had been infected with COVID-19. The arrest attempt was prompted by a report that Floyd had tried to pass a counterfeit $20 bill, which has been reported as a fake bill. Who investigates counterfeit money in the United States? It is usually the United States Secret Service. What happens if a business receives counterfeit money? The local police department contacts the Secret Service regarding the transaction. Looking for references to the Secret Service in present news reports, one will be hard pressed to find any involvement with the counterfeit bill, although they certainly are involved in locking down the White House and running other security details for the president. In the USA Today article, what we know about George Floyd's death and the alleged counterfeit money in Minneapolis, public officials have been, quote, mum on the location of the alleged counterfeit. From a symbolical point of view, it may be that the phrase fake bill is more important than any actual counterfeit paper. Lauren Coleman, in his Twilight Language weblog under an article titled George Floyd Sinks Coincidences and Name Games, points out that chauvin is actually the first part of the word chauvinism, which has to do with excessive patriotism and has passed into popular culture in phrases like male chauvinism that are supposedly representative of unwarranted bias, favoritism, or devotion to one's own particular group. The word chauvinism and chauvin in general comes from a possibly fictional character, Nicolas Chauvin, a legendary and excessively patriotic soldier. According to the story, Nicolas Chauvin was an old Napoleonic soldier, wounded 17 times. This reference to his having been wounded 17 times crops up repeatedly and is very intriguing in light of the fact that Derek Chauvin was subject to at least 17 complaints prior to his apprehension of George Floyd. Napoleon himself presented Chauvin with a Sabre of Honor award and a pension. And despite his complaints, allegedly Chauvin had received a Medal for Valor. So essentially we have Officer Chauvinist. In opposition to Officer Chauvinist, we have the Hennepin County attorney Mike Freeman. Morgan Freeman was a part of the movie The Dark Knight Rises. In the movie, the Special Forces Captain Jones is killed by Bane when Bane presses his knee across his throat, presumably crushing his windpipe. Other Dark Knight Rises mentions have been in the press recently. It was reported that Anne Hathaway thought she was auditioning for Harley Quinn. The name Anne Hathaway is actually also a reference to the wife of William Shakespeare. The surname Hathaway also is a part of the famous company Berkshire Hathaway, which is most associated with Warren Buffett, but also counts Bill Gates LeBron James and George Lucas 
among its investors and shareholders. In 1997, one Michael Hathaway was arrested for the murder of teenager Sarah Gruber at the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas. According to a petition on a possibly unreliable website, Hathaway killed Gruber by standing on her neck for 10 minutes until she was dead. Officer Chauvinist has been painted as having been racially motivated, which brings up specters of various media representations vividly depicted in American History X. In the movie, the character played by Edward Norton kills a black man by kicking his head into a curb. This curb stomp is performed by the character Derek Vineyard. D-E-R-E-K is of course phonetically linked to D-E-R-R-I-C-K, which means a hangman or a gallows. According to the occultic doctrine of barbarous names, names that sound like the originals carry the same magical force. Another honorable mention would be White Zombie, the 1932 film starring Bela Lugosi, which also features actor Frederick Peters as the character Chauvin, a zombie and former high executioner. According to one Maya Santa Maria, both Derek Chauvin and George Floyd worked together for her in a security detail at a club that she once owned, and they may have crossed paths, according to Santa Maria. The club is called El Nuevo Rodeo. More on that in a minute. One phrase that has been prominent in many media reports is gentle giant. George Floyd is repeatedly referred to as a gentle giant. Michael Brown was referred to using the same phrase, and so was Eric Gardner and Tamir Rice. Not only black victims, but also sometimes police officers are referred to in the same respect. For example, Lorne Ahrens and Terrence Carraway. From a literary perspective, the best that I can suggest is perhaps Of Mice and Men by novelist John Steinbeck. In the novel, the simple-minded Lenny is unaware of his own strength and ends up killing a woman. Possibly relevant is the fact that the novel tells the story of two characters who are displaced migrant workers who are in search of job opportunities during the Great Depression. George Floyd had been affected by coronavirus. The stay-at-home order had caused him to be laid off from his job, according to media reports. It has been widely reported that George Floyd was held down on the ground for 8 minutes and 46 seconds, and the 8 minute 46 second reference crops up in numerous tributes, news articles, and other mentions of the case. At 8.46 a.m. on September the 11th, the first airliner struck the first tower. This was Flight 11, which crashed, flying at roughly 466 miles an hour, into the north face of the North Tower between floors 93 and 99 at 8.46 and 40 seconds, according to the Wikipedia timeline. You see it again on history.com. At 8.46 a.m., Flight 11 hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Quite a coincidence. In a previous video, I said that some of the mask symbolism so prevalent in the culture now suggested that we were being initiated into some sort of occultic ritual. In Albert Mackey's Revised Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, Volume 1, we read that the conclusion of at least some of these mysteries has a name. The complete communication of the secrets in the ancient mysteries, when the aspirant was admitted into the Seychellum, or the most sacred place, and was invested by the hierophant, or priest, with all of the operetta, or sacred things, which constituted the perfect knowledge of the initiate. In Freemasonry, this is sometimes called the rite of entrusting, that is, the culmination of the initiation ceremony. But in Greek, the word is autopsy, from autopsia, meaning a seeing with one's own eyes, to see for yourself. Now in English, the word autopsy is often put together with the word coroner. In Canada and the United States, a coroner is a medical doctor who performs autopsies. According to the autopsy performed on George Floyd fairly shortly after his death, the cause of death was cardiopulmonary arrest complicated by law enforcement subdual restraint and neck compression. Things may have been complicated by underlying hypertensive heart disease, fentanyl intoxication, and recent methamphetamine use. Subsequently, a second autopsy was performed that was found to be in conflict with the first. According to the second, Floyd died of asphyxiation. The second autopsy was performed by one Dr. Baden. Michael Baden is something of a celebrity doctor in this regard, having hosted an HBO show titled autopsy. Baden has a number of curious connections. For example, 
He was a part of the House Select Committee on Assassinations that revisited the assassination of President John Kennedy. Baden concluded that it was Oswald. He looked at the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. He concluded that it was James Earl Ray. Baden testified during the murder trial of Phil Spector. He worked on the O.J. Simpson case. He worked on the Jeffrey Epstein case. He looked at the newly found remains of Tsar Nicholas II in the 1990s. He was part of a team that looked at the exhumed body of Dr. Yosef Mengele. He was involved involved in the John Belushi death case, and he performed an autopsy on Michael Brown, who had been killed in Ferguson, Missouri. It seems like Baden is everywhere, and in this regard, he somewhat reminds me of Judy Clark, an American attorney who has represented such defendants as Eric Rudolph, Ted Kaczynski, Jared Lee Loeffner, and the convicted Boston bomber Tsarnaev. The phrase, I can't breathe, has also been widely repeated as it was one of George Floyd's final statements according to the video recordings that were made and it has become something of a rallying cry at protests. Kobe Bryant's widow, Vanessa, reminds viewers that Kobe wore an I Can't Breathe shirt expressing solidarity with the family and friends of Eric Garner. In fact, he had arranged for the entire Lakers team to wear black and white I Can't Breathe t-shirts during a pregame warm-up back in 2014. Lauren Coleman also picks up on this, writing in his article, George Floyd sinks coincidences and name games. Kobe Bryant also had a tattoo of a crown on his right deltoid. Of course, the Latin word for crown is corona. And where's Kobe Bryant's gravesite? Corona del Mar Cemetery. He's actually laid to rest at the Pacific View Memorial Park, which is located in Corona del Mar, California, which happens to be on the 33rd degree of parallel latitude. Of course, people have been wearing or trying to find N95 masks to keep safe from coronavirus. Some people with N95 masks also cannot breathe. For instance, this New Jersey driver who crashed his car after passing out from wearing an N95 mask. The 95 numeral, it's cropped up as a secondary symbol. Many people have lost their 95 jobs. We were just reminded of the fact that Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower somewhere around the 95th floor. Minneapolis and St. Paul are referred to as the Twin Cities. One Stephen Jackson was referred to as the twin of George Floyd. Stephen Jackson has a name reminiscent of Jackson Stevens, who did more than anyone else to bankroll Bill Clinton's political ascendancy. In mythology, twins are often ominous symbols, although they can be auspicious. Sometimes they are cast as two halves of the same whole. In some cases, certain twins are viewed as sharing one soul between two bodies. If one twin dies, the living twin is destined for death or is missing half of its soul. Elon Musk's partner, Grimes, has been reported to be contemplating legally selling a part of her soul in an upcoming auction. Grime meaning dirt or filth and also having to do with mask as well as soot, which according to Michael Hoffman, drawing from Kenneth Grant, is a word that's connected with the Egyptian god Set and, by extension, Satan. Getting into place names, I want to set the stage by reminding viewers that I discussed Kirkland in connection with coronavirus. Kirkland literally means church land, which is very interesting in light of the impact that coronavirus has had on churches in the United States and around the world. This study of place names is referred to as mystical toponymy. Lauren Coleman gets into it. You see it described as the study of place names underneath the masthead on his weblog. But mystical toponymy traces its origin back to James Shelby Downer. I'll give you an example of this related to Ted Kaczynski and communicated by Michael Hoffman II. Kaczynski was arrested in Twin Gulch Drive in Montana. You can actually see that the area in which Kaczynski was arrested is literally referred to as the scapegoat wilderness. And of course, a scapegoat is a person who takes the blame for something or takes the fall. Now, with this brief background of mystical toponymy in mind, we're going to look at a map of Minneapolis. Chauvin and his three former colleagues were initially called to the Powderhorn neighborhood. Now, a Powderhorn is a flask for carrying gunpowder. So, Officer Chauvinist confronted George Floyd in the Powderhorn. And a powder horn is a flask especially made from the horn of an ox or a cow. Well, remember Maya Santa Maria, who owned the club at which both Floyd and Chauvin worked, and it was called the El Nuevo Rodeo, or the New Rodeo. 
luxury stores, for example on Rodeo Drive, were looted and damaged in some of the recent protests. Glenn Beck once referred to himself as a rodeo clown. Rodeo comes from the Spanish verb rodear, meaning to round up cattle. It has to do with going around, revolving in a circle. In cowboy lingo, to cut a circle has to do with cordoning off an area from which you will gather cattle, sometimes for branding. Corona in California is referred to as the Circle City. The reason why is evident from a satellite image. Corona, California also happens to be at the 33rd degree of parallel latitude. In the manuscript King Kill 33 by James Shelby Downard and Michael A. Hoffman II, there are numerous examples of the number 33 and its relationship to both Freemasonry as well as the Kennedy assassination. Some of the very first riots and protests in Minneapolis occurred next to East 33rd Street. To round things out, Corona, Alabama is also at 33 degrees, and George Floyd's son is named Quincy Mason Floyd. The whole Floyd Chauvin encounter was prompted when a report was made on the evening of the 25th of May when Floyd bought a pack of cigarettes from Cup Foods, a grocery store in Minneapolis. Cupfoods.com was in maintenance mode and unavailable. But according to several listings, including one on Yelp, Cup Foods is not simply a grocery store, but it also offers IT services and computer repair. Availing myself of the Wayback Machine, I was able to determine Cupfoods.com had advertised itself as being available for computer diagnostics, antivirus and other computer maintenance, as well as for screen repair, operating system reinstallation, unlocking, and other cell phone related repairs. According to the 911 transcript on May the 25th regarding George Floyd, we read that the people in the store called the police and said, quote, someone comes our store and give us fake bills, and we realized it before he left the store, and we ran back outside. They were sitting on their car. We tell them to give us their phone, end quote. In addition to Cup Foods being a grocery store and a cell phone and computer repair shop, it also has a mosque in the basement. Across the street from Cup Foods, we have the Dragon Walk, whose surveillance video has been shown in several reports. Dragon also is related to the word Draco. Stay-at-home orders and other measures regarding coronavirus have been referred to as Draconian. Dragon, besides referring to a giant sea fish and serpent, derives from a word that means to see clearly and possibly means the one with the deadly glance. George Floyd himself had been born in Fayetteville. The Fayette Connection, or the Fayette Factor, was written about by author Jim Brandon in his books Weird America and the Rebirth of Pan, expanded upon by Lauren Coleman, and his update of the situation with George Floyd and the Fayette Factor. One of the major employers in Fayetteville is the Department of Defense, and eight of the top ten American defense contractors are located there. Two of the most well-known locations are Fort Bragg and Pope Army Airfield, but it is also the home of the John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and School. The purpose of this school is to recruit, assess, select, train, and educate psychological warfare operations and special forces soldiers. And with that in mind, we are reminded of the fact that in the aftermath of 9-11, the Wall Street Journal reported that the Pentagon has begun deploying forces to mount psychological operations or PSYOPs. And according to a shocking statement in United Press International article of April 10, 2006, the U.S. home audience is an admitted target of U.S. military propaganda. We read that protesters show up outside of Derek Chauvin's Orange County home. Donald Trump is often mocked for having an orange face. The Chauvin home was located in Windermere. Windermere happens to be a location in the original version of Tekken. Tekken is a fighting game originally released in late December 1994, early 1995. Back in March, Florida Senator Marco Rubio tweeted, quote, please stop spreading rumors about martial law, end quote. He spelled Marshall, M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L. -L. Presumably he meant M-A-R-T-I-A-L, 
which is of course a state of affairs where military government takes over and ordinary law is suspended. He was widely mocked for this typo, and yet the spelling that he utilized is the same spelling of a playable character in Tekken. Initially, I considered this to simply be a curiosity or a throwaway fact. It was noted at the time and now takes on a bit of a deeper meaning in light of the Windermere connection. The martial law from the game is a Chinese-American restaurateur. This is doubly interesting since, firstly, the coronavirus has been referred to as the Chinese virus, and secondly, because the coronavirus's toll on Chinese restaurants has been devastating. Restaurants in general have been devastated by coronavirus. Derek Chauvin's home is also situated very close to the Magic Kingdom. Magic Johnson has been back in the news recently, recollecting his participation in the 1992 Barcelona Olympic Games. He was even interviewed regarding his thoughts about coronavirus. The Fed has a magic money machine. The U.S. is, quote, printing money to help save the economy from the COVID-19 crisis. How does it work? Where does the stimulus money come from? It works like magic, although there are dissenting opinions. The wife of Derek Chauvin says in her divorce filing that she wants to change her name. The estranged wife of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin intends to change her name, but she doesn't want any spousal support despite being currently unemployed. Chauvin told the court she plans to change her name, although Kelly Chauvin didn't reveal what name she plans to use, but she has previously been known as Kelly May Thao, T-H-A-O. The four officers involved in this George Floyd event are Thomas Lane, J. Alexander Kung, Derek Chauvin, and Tu Thao, T-H-A-O. Derek Chauvin's wife, Kelly Thao, happened to have the same last name as one of the officers involved in the incident. Snopes has picked up on this and they state, Derek Chauvin's wife and Tu Thao are not siblings. Tu Thao is not Ms. Chauvin's brother. I would greatly appreciate help putting that rumor to rest, said Kelly Chauvin's divorce lawyer. But Snopes interestingly does share that Kelly Chauvin indeed has a brother and he's a police officer, apparently in St. Paul, the twin city to Minneapolis. So is it Tu Thao? or do we have two thous? But more seriously, Snopes' denial that Kelly Chauvin and Tu Thao are siblings leaves out several other interesting connections that they could have. Are they cousins? Were they friends? Did they know each other? All of these presumably would be interesting questions. The whole thing reminds me of the Chertoff cousin debacle in 9-11 research. Benjamin Chertoff helped to produce popular mechanics article 9-11 debunking the myths, and he just happened to have the same name as then U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security under President George W. Bush, Michael Chertoff. But in an effort to deny that the Chertoffs were related in any way, U.S. News and World Report stated, and it was picked up by Wikipedia, that no one in my family has ever met anyone related to Michael Chertoff, as if having met somebody is a precondition for being related to them. But I want to go back to the word autopsy, seen with one's own eyes. This is Georgia in the early 19th century. I want to concentrate on the lower southeastern portion, Camden County, the area simply designated here Floyd. Now this is not to be confused with Floyd County, the enchanted land. Floyd County and Floyd in Camden County both owe their names to the same man, John Floyd, 19th century politician and soldier. The area that I'm concerned with in Georgia is actually referred to, or at one time was well known as, Floyd's Neck. Now there's two Floyd's Neck areas in the United States that I am presently aware of. One was in the area now known as Long Island. Floyd's Neck is bordered on the north by the Satilla River, on the south by the Crooked River, on the east by the Cumberland, and on the west by I-95. Taking a look at an older map, we can identify the St. Illa or the Satilla River on the north, the Cumberland on the east, the Crooked River on the south. Looking at a newer map with the interstates represented, again we see the Satilla on the north, the Crooked River on the south, the Cumberland on the east, and I-95 on the west, which means Floyd's Neck, Georgia is right in the middle. The word neck also brings in the execution symbol complex that we noticed with the word Derek. There are numerous phrases, including neck of the woods, which seems to be the sense of Floyd's Neck, Georgia, to stick one's neck out, neck and neck, win by a neck, and being into something up to your neck. The number 95 has cropped up periodically, including on the N95 mask, Interstate 95, as we just saw with Floyd's neck, as well as several protests recently. 
H&M stores closing 95 stores, and so on. Remember Maya Santa Maria, right below Floyd's Neck in Camden County is St. Mary's. Santa Maria is Spanish for St. Mary or Holy Mary. And Maya recollects the 2012 phenomenon. This had to do with the Mayan calendar and speculations that the world was going to end in 2012. The Dark Knight Rises also was released in 2012. Let's take a closer look at the Georgia map. Floyd's Neck is right across St. Andrew Sound from Jekyll Island. Jekyll Island is one of the barrier islands off the coasts of South Carolina and Georgia, and it happens to be the birthplace of the Federal Reserve. According to FederalReserveHistory.org, there was a meeting at Jekyll Island November the 20th through November the 30th, 1910. It was a secret gathering at a secluded island off the coast of Georgia, and it laid the foundations for the Federal Reserve System. It had many high-profile attendees, including then-Senator Nelson Aldrich, U.S. Treasury Department Assistant Secretary Andrew, and numerous leading financiers, including Benjamin Strong and Paul Warburg, even though allegedly the staff at Jekyll Island did not know who was there because it was a secret meeting. But at this meeting, these financiers, senators, government officials formulated a plan that became the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve is America's central bank. G. Edward Griffin has gotten into this in his The Creature from Jekyll Island. The Federal Reserve has been busy during the coronavirus pandemic injecting trillions of dollars into the markets. They're contemplating moving interest rates into negative territory. Alan Greenspan in the past has suggested that the Federal Reserve is above the law. He once stated, quote, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. Interestingly, last year, Trump hinted that he might try to fire the chairman, Powell. What does it all mean? Who's behind it? We will take a closer look at the financial angle in an upcoming installment.